Do you see the, the slides? Yes. All right. So, uh, well, uh, good, uh, good day, everyone. I am Ivan Donce, and I will present a inspired a computational model of object classification. Um, this work uh, here, yeah, right. Uh, this works about the benefits of an integration of two modular systems, the visual processing system and the classification system. Uh, for this model, uh, perception has an important role, uh, given an interpret interpretation of visual objects to the agent. This interpretation uh, about objects can be represented with symbolic data, so the agent can make decisions about the environment. Um, this, is, this is where we developed a classification system to convert visual features into symbolic data. So, <clears throat> understanding in a fully manner how the human brain and specifically visual object recognition is an open problem in, in neuroscience. Uh, and in the real world, uh, visual stimuli is situated in different environments and contexts. Machines today have not reached our level of human perceptions. So uh, more specifically, uh, uh, problems we see in our models is that there is not a clear distinction between low, mid and high level of visual processing, <clears throat> having an absence of transparency and modularity in those systems. And additionally, these models about object recognition do not consider important properties of modularity uh, and scalability when integrated with other cognitive processes. Uh, through the study of, uh, of, our, of neuroscientific evidence about brain systems, their functions and communications, it is possible to integrate a computational model of visual process system and, and object classification. So uh, this neuroscientific evidence is um, about the ventral pathway of ventral processing in the brain, which is responsible for uh, visual recognition. And uh, well, this is divided into different brain regions and, and functions and their functions. So uh, the first uh, the first function is for elementary features, uh, the extract for of elementary features for visual light stimuli, then uh, these features are composed into more complex features. And, uh, and well, finally, this uh, visual information is classified into specific objects. Um, so the proposed model consists uh, of uh, in a visual processing system that takes the visual stimuli into visual features, and then a classification system that takes these features and converts them into a symbolic classes. <clears throat> so um, here we see, uh, uh, well, you can see a, a general block model where you can uh, see how the visual system and its uh, regions of neural systems are connected to a classification system. So <clears throat> to explain this model, uh, I will begin with a visual processing system where uh, it takes uh, the images, uh, a set of images, mm -hmm. then it gets maps of oriented edges, uh, composing them for spatial invariance, and then obtaining uh, endpoints of these edges. Uh, with these oriented maps, it gets the angular selectivity maps, and then the shape selectivity maps, simple shape selectivity maps. And with all this information, you can, uh, well, this system gets the connected regions of the image. We will help to the object classification. Next, uh, the process follows the classification system. Uh, <clears throat> all feature maps from the visual system are uh, here as, as input. This each map is divided into small submaps for local feature scope. Then each submap is matched with submaps in the system memory and then labeled with a corresponding symbolic identifier. All, all these submaps are then uh, composed into larger submaps for a larger feature scope. And each one composed uh, in, is, is then labeled like, uh, like before. Uh, these submaps are composed into, into whole maps then at, at the end, and uh, these maps are then labeled like, like before. So finally, all identifiers are gathered into one set of symbols, and that is a class of the current object. <clears throat> uh, 
So, uh, and well, and this current class is sent to other cognitive processes for storage and future management. For a case of study here, uh, we input uh, five sets of objects. Uh, first, a set of simple objects, like you see here, and then sets of the, the same objects, but, but transformed or modified by rotation, occlusion, position, and, and size. Uh, for this case study, we wanted to observe the emerging behavior of superclasses and see a diversity improvement of these superclasses when the classification system is working with the visual process system. For the results, uh, well, you can see here, uh, first for each object in, into the visual process system, we could see the maps of oriented edges uh, and then the, end, the, the combined maps into end stop, with the end stop filter. Then, uh, these combined maps into uh, angular selectivity maps and then shape selectivity maps of connecting. And yes, you can see here in the, in the left side and then connected regions uh, of all this information. Then we follow up with the classification system, uh, which uh, we gave all these features as input and the, the, the system gave us the uh, returns the uh, class of each object of, of the object set. Uh, you can see here the actually in this in this case study we use uh, seven digit numbers as the symbols for the for the class. So to check for superclasses uh, in terms of uh, here we, we uh, the superclass is an intersected class actually. So uh, we measured how much of this superclass is class B about class A, for example. The intersection of class A and class B is a superclass. And, and with this, uh, we get a, a superclass sharing value. And with this value, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> from all classes resulting from each set, we represented uh, and compared in a dissimilarity matrix and see the behavior of how superclasses were shared among objects in a set. So in this example, for, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, the dissimilarity matrix of each object class compared with other object classes and how they shared a superclass. So we could then compare these dissimilarity matrices uh, resulted from classification system running uh, when in two setups. First, when the classification system is integrated with a visual process system, and the other setup is when the uh, classification system is working alone without the integration with a visual processing system. And uh, we compare them with a dissimilarity matrix of uh, uh, the raw object images themselves. So uh, as you can see, the, the behavior of uh, superclass um, sharing was better with the, when, when the setup was the classification system and the visual processing system working together, then actually the classification system working uh, alone. So uh, here uh, uh, we did uh, then uh, um, a second order uh, second order dissimilarity matrix, where uh, to to see in an overall uh, general um, behavior the superclass sharing and the consistency of these behaviors. Uh, when the classification system and visual process system were, were uh, working together, we could, we could see a somewhat um, a consistent behavior in, this, in the resulting classes. But uh, when the classification system is not integrated with a visual process system, there is some uh, uh, clear inconsistency in the behavior of how this uh, superclass were, uh, where superclass diversity were. Uh, in, Behave, behaving there, yeah, sorry. So uh, this may be because, uh, well, this this is because of how much information is uh, is working here together in the classification system when it is working with a uh, with a previous visual system. Uh, then we organized the data into the similarity matrices, but instead of comparing each object class, we compared classes of each transform instance of the object. That is the object in the basic form, then the position transform scale rotated and occluded in, a, in the same uh, dissimilarity matrix. 
We could see that the classes generated shared superclasses uh, between these transformations, implying that there is a some, some invariance when classifying an object. We also could see uh, the consistency across objects. For example, uh, here you can see the, uh, an object we named uh, Happy Face. And this, 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 similarity, met this similarity matrix is uh, similar to the the similarity matrix of how shaped the uh, object here, but not that similar with the sun star object that we have here. We could see um, we could see then the, uh, and in a second order the similarity matrix how all these uh, behaviors of superclass theory in between transformations of objects um, were were consistent or not, and in some in general were consistent. Of, of course, we see. Uh, some consistency in the uh, comparing with the happy face object with other um, objects. So, <clears throat> so concluding, um, the the um, this work is about a binary computation, computational model consisting of a visual processing system and classification system. The system could classify on life, uh, the meaning that it creates new classes when needed. Uh, classes are composed from visual subsymbolic features. So maintaining this information, uh, it, it could be possible, it is possible to maintain this information to the end of the process. The integrated system maintains transparent, modular, and distributed approach. And uh, well, this work is a part of a larger system to understand human perception. So uh, actually more integrations are needed with other cognitive processes. And well, some reference and uh, thank you for your uh, attention. If you, if, if you have some questions, you can you can ask, of course. Uh, hi, I have a, I have a question. Uh, I'm just curious. I'm working towards building what I call uh, a, a collaborative uh, design system that requires the ability to to some to recognize uh, design objects like a screw. Uh, a screw might come in several different sizes. You, you need to be able to recognize that that is a screw so you can modify, you can make it longer, you can make it shorter, uh, but you need, to, you need to be able to, to create kind of a semantic model for each component so that you can uh, morph them and match them uh, as required for different designs. Uh, how close is your system to doing something like that? Mm, well, um, it's, uh, it's somewhat, somewhat close because, uh, well, more or less, because this is look like a previous uh, processing to do that, actually. So here, the superclass management is actually the system do not manage the superclasses. Uh, it generates classes, and then with these classes, uh, all our systems could manage superclasses and then actually make, for example, a a uh, structure of classes, uh, hierarchical classes, and um, actually uh, older systems could uh, create a semantic uh, ontology, for example, or something like that. This is more like a previous processing, a pre-processing for, uh, for example, semantic uh, structures. So uh, this, actually this could help for, for that, but it will not, not do that actually. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, sorry. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I just, uh, I just wanted to say that that whole thing about generating superclasses and analyzing instances by their similarity is a wonderful inversion of the tr of the typical importance we put on classes and instances. When you think about, you know, I was talking about metaphors and analogies, right? If you think about a class as something very special that you have to design top down versus something that you're deriving from a bunch of similar instances, regardless of how similar or dissimilar they are, then all of a sudden you have this explosion of generated superclasses, which and maybe superclasses of superclasses of superclasses, which becomes part of that generator for some of that meta modeling we were talking about. Very interesting. 
All right, yes. <clears throat> okay, any other comments or questions? No? Thank you, then we shall proceed with the next talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.